Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today's video is a step away from my usual resin themed video because I've been sent this super magnetic board from Arteza along with lots of acrylic paints and chalk markers because Arteza want me to do a Halloween themed tutorial. I thought the idea sounded like so much fun and it's good to step out of your comfort zone occasionally so that's what I did. As this chalkboard's magnetic, I thought I would make some spooky magnetic decorations to give you ideas for your Halloween parties. So, today I'll be making scary monster fingers dripping with blood, quick and easy spooky eyeballs, oozing blood to clip onto the top of your magnetic board, this super cute magnetic spider, and I will also be experimenting with the chalk markers to decorate my board. If you think that sounds like fun, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, let's start with the crazy magnetic zombie fingers. Right, I'm using air dry clay for this and I'm just going to be sticking my fingers into some kneaded air dry clay and then pouring um, plaster of Paris into the cavity. Now, this works really well if you're making monster fingers because they're not going to come out pretty like your fingers <laughs> they're going to come out kind of a little bit deformed because it's not a perfect method for perfect casting but for zombie fingers it's a perfect method because it's cheap and we all like cheap so that this is what I'm doing I'm just doing the same thing for all my fingers if you ever want to do a really detailed casting of your hand you can buy proper molding solution for that and it is quite expensive and I don't think anyone wants to spend all that money for a Halloween decoration so I'm showing you my cheap version once you've moulded all your fingers in the air dry clay, it's time to add the plaster of Paris. I'm using stone cast plaster and if you've seen some of my other plaster casting videos you'll know it's my favourite one because it's really strong. And I put the water into the cup and I just kept on adding the powder until it formed an island on the top of the water and then you know you've got enough. And mixed it all up and I'm just pouring it in. And then you just give it a good tap and then you will leave it to set for about half an hour. I've left a space at the top and you will need to do that if you're adding magnets. For So the space at the top will give you space for your magnet and some more plaster when the first pour is set. Right, so it's half an hour later, the plaster is set and it's time to add the magnets. I will put the magnets in my Amazon storefront and leave a link to my storefront in the description so you can go along and see all the different things I've used. I'm just placing these strong magnets on the top of the plaster and then I'm going to just pour some more plaster over the top. Wait another half an hour and they'll be ready. Right, half an hour later again and all you need to do is peel off the air dry clay and you can store that away with a wet paper towel and you'll be able to use it again another time. So I'm just filing off all the little imperfections. There will be quite a lot of lumps and bumps, that's expected, but it's come out quite well. And then before varnishing and painting, really, you need to leave it about a week to dry out completely. Um, but I did cheat. I've got some uh, silica gel, which I use for drying flowers, and I put them into the silica gel and it took all the moisture out and they were dry really quickly. But if you don't le let them dry out properly, the paint will, will just peel off when you come to paint them. So you do need to let them dry out. 
So before I painted the fingers, I did give them a coat of polyurethane varnish, but I didn't show that in the video. I forgot to record it. I've just actually put it on a little metal block because it's a, obviously it's magnetic, so I can put it on something metal and it helps me to paint it without having to touch it. So that was quite handy. I'm using the Arteza paints. I have a mixture of the Craft acrylic paints and the Iridescent acrylic paints, which work really well together. I found that when looking through the colours in both sets, they complement each other really well. So for each of the Iridescent colours, you've got one of the Craft paints that goes with it. And that that's good because the Iridescent colours actually work a lot better if you use an acrylic base first and then put the iridescent paint on top. They do work really well that way, but they can be used on their own too. They're really thick and lustrous. I really love them and you can use them on all kinds of surfaces, which makes them even better. But as you can see, I've done one coat of each of the colours and the coverage is fantastic. I'm really happy with them. I have a coupon code for 10% off if you would like to purchase any and I will put that down below in the description. I would highly recommend them, especially the iridescent ones. There's just something so special about them and the colours shift before your eyes. They're just so magical. I really like those. Right, it's time to make that oozing, dripping blood and for that I'm using my glue gun. I absolutely love using hot melt glue for crafts it's so versatile you can do so much with it other than just sticking things down i've just um done a long drip shape on a silicon mat and once it's set it just peels off so that's great for doing your blood droplets and then you just add a little bit onto the finger or thumb and put the droplet on and then you've got your dripping blood so you just repeat the process for all the fingers and then you simply paint it with your red acrylic paint and they're done. It's such a quick and easy job. Right, now for the clip-on dripping blood for the top of my board. It's just the same process again. I drew a template and put it underneath my silicon mat added three magnets and then just filled it all in with the hot melt glue and then all, when that was all filled up I just painted it. That is how easy it was. It was probably done in about five minutes. I painted it while it was still on the mat to make it nice and easy. It's probably best to give it another coat of paint afterwards and I actually did that on the back but I didn't film it. Right, next job, googly eyes. I really love these. I think they're so effective and they were so, so easy to do. I've just got a silicon mould which is designed for baking um, little uh, half sphere cake, uh, cake things, I think. I pinched it from my husband because he's a chef. Anyway, I've pinched his mould and I'm just filling it up with hot melt glue. So again, the hot glue comes into it and it took, oh, it did take about five sticks of glue, but they're really cheap, so I wasn't too worried about that. And yeah, I just kept kept on filling it up, and it will take a lot longer to set. You can put it in the fridge if you want for a few minutes. Uh, and then that was set. I didn't fill it all the way up to the top. A bit like the fingers with the plaster of Paris, you need to leave a little bit of space at the top, let it set, then add your magnet, and then put a little bit more over to the top to keep the glue in, to keep the magnet in position. Right, once they're set, they just pop out of that mould really, really easily and it's time to paint them. I'm just using the white Arteza acrylic paint and giving it a few coats. I think I did three coats of the white. I just found that it wasn't covering as well as I wanted it to in, in one coat, so I did three coats, but then it was fine. 
And then I've just got this um, template that I've had in my drawer and never used. I think it used to belong to my dad. It's probably about 20 or 30 years old, that template, and I've never used it. But I finally found a use, to, use for it. And I'm just stippling paint on for the iris. I'm using a mixture of the iridescent paint and a little bit of the darker green craft paint. And I did that for both of them. And then I've used a smaller hole in the template and I'm stippling on the black pupil in the middle. It's just a really easy way to do it because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get a good circle if I did it freehand. No way. And even if I did, then I wouldn't have been able to make it the same size on the other one. So if you don't have one of these templates, you could use something else. Maybe cut a hole out of some um, cardboard or paper or um, plastic packaging or something. And then you'll be able to do the same thing. And I'm just using a really thin line brush and just going around the edge in black ink. If you don't want to do it that way, you could use a black pen. But I, I like to paint it on and I'm also just brushing on some black lines over the uh, iris just for more realistic effect. And then I will use some red paint to do some popping veins. And in this video, as you've noticed, I'm making everything into magnets to go onto my magnetic board. But, you know, you don't have to do that. You could use these for all sorts of Halloween decorations. You could add them onto strings on a mobile or something like that. They don't have to be magnets. And I think this idea can, you know, be implemented into all sorts of Halloween projects. Just use your imagination and go wild with it. Now let's make a spooky spider. I've made my spider quite cute because I really don't like spiders and I didn't want a scary one. <laughs> so right, it's the same process for the body as I've just used for the eyeballs, but you will need a smaller mould to make the head. And so I'm not going to show you all that again. I just did the same as I did for the eyeballs and painted it. I'm just going to show you how I made the legs, which is the same as the way I did the blood drips for the fingers, just onto a silicon mat. I drew a template before I did it and just put it underneath. I did it on both sides of the paper so I could turn the paper over and have exactly the same shape for the other side of the spider. It's so, so quick and easy. And all, the, all you need to do is let it set and you, then you're ready to paint it. I'm using the black paint from the iridescent set of Arteza paints and I think it's actually my favourite one which is strange that the black one should be my favourite but the reason for it is it's kind of got like another colour in it it's got like a, br a bronzy tint to it when you see it in different lights it's really sparkly and not a hard black like a browny bronzy black and I just really really do like it I don't know if you can tell hopefully you'll see in, if you see it from a different angle that it's got that different tone to it. Right now so you can see how I've painted the body parts in the iridescent paint and I'm just going to glue it all together with the glue gun again. As you can see the glue gun is very important in all my today's projects. I've used it quite a lot and I will put a link to my glue gun in my, um, well I won't put a link, I'll put it in my storefront as with everything else and give you a link to the storefront. So I'm going to glue all this together and then I'm going to give it some spiky hair. Right then, so I wanted to make the <laughs> spider a little bit more friendly looking. As I said before, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of spiders. And so I wanted to make it a little bit more likeable and decided to give it some hair. And I had a brush which I'd retrieved from my dog who retrieved it from my daughter's makeup bag and wrecked it. <laughs> she wasn't very happy about it. As you can see, it was kind of wrecked. But I didn't want to throw it away because you know what it's like. You see these things and you think that could be useful. And it was. I've taken some of the hairs from the brush, bunched them up and 
trimmed them off and I'm just going to add some glue just to the end to hold it all together and then I can just add it to the spider with the glue. So I repeated it and did it. I did three um, spikes of hair and it, it kind of made it into a punk rocker type of spider. Uh, I know spiders don't have hairstyles but you know artistic license and all of that I just thought it would be quite cute and let me know what you think. Um, I thought it was quite good. I've put it on the fridge now and my granddaughter thinks it's ace. So yeah, that it passed the granddaughter test. And she doesn't like spiders either. So if she likes it, I've passed the test of making it friendly. Right, it's time to decorate the board. Now, as I said at the beginning, Arteza sent me some really, really good chalk markers for this um, magnetic chalkboard and I thought I would make a really great video and do it all time lapse showing you my wonderful writing until I discovered that I really couldn't video it because I'm rubbish. <laughs> I just kept going wrong and having to rub it out again. Nothing to do with the pens. The pens are fantastic and they go on so well. It's all to do with the person controlling the pens. And every time I tried to film it, my head got in the way. And so I'm just going to show you this little bit where I did manage to film it without my head in the way just to, so I'm showing you at least something where I'm using the chalk pens. And so what I will just have to do is show you the results of them because I, I wanted to review them for Arteza and, but yeah, I, I'm just going to have to tell you how wonderful they are <laughs> because they really are great. The colours stand out so good. They really pop. And I've put some, there's a dark and a light shade of every colour. And so I've put some of the dark around the edges and it did take me ages because I'm not a natural when it comes to script writing. Um, it took me a long time. And now I'm just doing some um, cobwebs and that was nice and easy. So I could film that. And the pens are really good because they have extra tips in the pack. So you can either use the chisel tip or the bullet tip. For, you know depending on what kind of effect you're after so I've got the bullet tip on at the moment and these uh, chalk pens also come with a set of stickers so you can use the stickers on your uh, canisters for you know your pots and things for storage and label them and then when you put something else in the pot you can just rub it off and change the label so that's really good that they give you all those labels with it and I'm sure I'm going to make use of that when I get my new craft room and I've got all my new storage. I can label all my boxes with them. So I'm really pleased with those stickers. And so I decorated the board uh, in just the same way all over and left spaces for my magnets. And then I just added my magnets to give it that 3D effect. And it turned out really great. I think it will work if you're having a party and you want something out by your front door to welcome people in. But it will also be good for any other um, festival. I mean, Christmas, you could do the same thing just with Christmassy things and just welcome people in your own arty style. But it would be great as well for if you've got a cafe or um, if you do craft stalls to, you know, advertise your things that you're selling on your craft stalls. So it's a really, really good chalkboard and I just know I'm going to be using it a lot. So here we have our finished Halloween sign together with the spooky magnets. And as you can see, the chalk markers have come out really well. The colours are really bright and smooth. And of course, once Halloween's over, it can all be wiped down and the magnets can be put away in a box for next year, ready to be used again. And then I can just use my board for Christmas time and I'll look forward to making some Christmas decorations for it. I've reviewed quite a few things for Arteza now and one thing that stands out every time is the quality. Everything has always been of high quality and so far... 
I haven't had anything bad to say and that's not just because they've supplied me with these things. I really would be honest if there were any problems I would tell you because my viewers are important to me and I wouldn't recommend you buy anything if I wouldn't use it myself. So I do recommend everything here and that's completely genuine. Everything will be in the description, all the links to Arteza and all the other products that I've used. And if you would like some more inspiration and to see what else Arteza have to offer, please visit their YouTube channel. The link to their channel is above on the left. Or you can visit some more of my videos if you enjoyed this one. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching and bye for now.